Hi guys, Jay here with another video on understanding your dog. Today we're going to be talking about showering your dog and how to make it a positive experience for not only you, your dog as well. Hopefully this video will help you, some of you get through with the difficulties that you face in grooming or showering your dog. So to start off, we have to ensure that our dog sees the whole experience as a positive thing. They can't be too afraid, they can't be too anxious or stressed out when you prepare them for a shower. To do this, we have to positively pair the location that you want to shower your dog at, whether it's your yard, your toilet, or anywhere else. To do so, we have to set our dogs up for success. We allow them to investigate the area that we choose to shower them, and every time they make progress in either going closer to the place or stepping into the place, we reward them and mark that reward as well. Second, we have to counterchain the behavior of being afraid of showers. For most of our dogs, they are already afraid of being pulled into the shower. And when you try to bring them to the shower, they'll run away. You have to bring out the leash and then you have to drag them in. By doing so, it only creates more stress for our dogs. So with blue here, I have the cue that is shower and she'll just go into the bathroom herself. For a start, it wasn't always that easy. I had to really associate the whole idea of even stepping into the bathroom with a very, very rewarding experience for her. Started off with her even looking in the general direction of the bathroom. I'll reward her for that. And we slowly built up into her putting her head near the, near the entrance of the bathroom to sniffing the doorway, putting one paw in, two paws in, and ultimately finally going in voluntarily. Once we've done that and they're comfortable with stepping into the place themselves, next is to reduce the stress of actually having a shower. Because even though some of our dogs seem fine with it, they exhibit a lot of behaviors and body language that shows that they're actually stressed out. And it gets worse if they know that a shower is coming. So the way I did that is by counterchaining the whole thought process of Blue. Sometimes I'll just tell her to get into the shower room, into the bathroom, and we don't take a shower. We just sit in there and we just do some training, play some games, make it completely random so she doesn't feel like every time that I say the word shower, it's the whole act and process of taking an actual shower. Next, we'll go through this quick video that I've taken of one of my recent showers with Blue. And hopefully it'll help you guys be able to read some more body languages of your dogs while actually doing the shower. A lot of praise, a lot of affection. I used to give her treats in the bath as well, but we've reached a point whereby it's not really necessary. She knows that this whole process is going to be this way. She's fine with it. it just, she just has a little bit of spike in her stress levels. So before I was able to pick up her legs like that, I had to make her very comfortable with me handling her. If she were to pull away her hands while I was doing this, or she were to tuck her tail in, I would not force her, and I would just shower what I can. So all of this, she still looks really comfortable. Her tail's in a, in a very neutral position. Her body doesn't showcase any form of like, she's trying to hide herself away or anything like that. So I could still continue. Turn around. And yes, I have the cue for her to turn around because my bathroom's a little bit small. So I couldn't really move around her. I had to get her to switch sides so that I could wash the other side of her. So if you do it enough, you'll notice that Blue actually lifted up her paw herself to give it to me to shower because we've done this quite a few times and she's showing me that she's comfortable. She knows the process. Especially when handling your dog's tail, some of them don't really like it. They're not very comfortable with it. So start slow, maybe start near the base of the tail and monitor your dog if they start to showcase any signs of 
um, fear or stress, you might not want to push it too far. So over here as well, I have the cue, the vocal cue, which is face. And that lets Blue know that I'm going to start washing her face. Because not many dogs like their face to be handled or things being so close to their eyes, their snout or their mouth. This helps prepare Blue for what's coming. I give her slow massages on the head. I make sure it's a very relaxing thing for her as well. And that's the turnaround cue again. So now I'm going to apply the conditioner for her. It's not rec it's not necessary, but some of you might do it, some of you might not. I find it's a very good way to... After I apply the conditioner, you have to let it sit for a couple of minutes. And in that time frame, I do things like um, trim her nails or brush her teeth while the conditioner sets in. Once again, it's just notifying her that I'm going to be applying things on her face. So this is brushing her teeth. I'm going to let her investigate the toothbrush first, although she doesn't really seem to care too much about it. I still always let her sniff it, look at it, and make sure that she doesn't show any kind of negative signs to what's coming. Some dogs have negative association with things like nail clippers. If they look at it, then they start to try and flee. And don't forget, like I'm in a small bathroom. They can't have the flight response from that. So I want to make sure that she is very comfortable before I proceed. So over here, I notice her pulling back her head a little bit, but just a little bit, not too much that she wants to completely break free. She's just telling me she's a little bit uncomfortable. So the way I handle that is by reassuring her that it's all right. This is going to be over soon. You, you won't get hurt in this. So as long as she was still able to respond to my cues of telling her to come here, look at me, I would still continue with this. But if she's really too stressed out and I tell her like, Blue, come here, and she doesn't respond, then I feel like, okay, I'm not going to push it any further. Once again, same thing, you wait for their reaction. Lots of praise, lots of affection. Oops, sorry. So same thing, it's something new. I bring out the Dremel, which I use because I shower my girls every week. And they do get quite a bit of uh, exercise in, in the parks and stuff like that. So naturally, their nails file themselves while they're running or they're playing in the park. And since it's every week, I just have to do a little bit of maintenance. I just file down their nails, grind down their nails a little bit. So there's something I want to highlight as well. You can tell that Blue is not completely comfortable with it. She's more of just letting this happen because she knows that it's not going to harm her in any way. You can tell by the side eyes that she's giving. She's not exactly looking at it. So it's the same where some people who are afraid of, let's say, needles, they have to go for a vaccination or a blood test. 
they'll, they'll look away from wherever the needle is going in. They know that it has to happen. They're just not the most comfortable with it. And so the moment I put down her paw, she knows that that paw is done. She looks back at me. Once again, a lot of reassurance, a lot of praise. So right there, she started to pull her hand back a little bit. So sometimes if you're holding their paw for too long, it might be a bit uncomfortable for them in that position or something like that. That's why they start to exhibit these signs. Last one. And then that's when I tell her it's the last one of that paw. So it's probably her dew claw or her last claw. And then so she knows that, oh, it's going to end soon. By doing that, you have to be on point with your timing. If you say it's the last one, you have to finish really soon. Even if you can't complete the task at hand, you have to stop right there. You can see the difference in her tail positioning from when I was grinding her nails to which is just washing off right now. Her tail went up instead. Previously, it wasn't tucked between her legs, but it was at a slightly lower angle. So wiping her down, this one is pretty self-explanatory. She's comfortable with touch, with being handled, so she sees this as a reward as well at the end of the shower. So once again, before I completely blind her with the towel to dry her, I give her the cute face. Okay. So that's the video. I hope it helps you guys understand more about the experience of showering with your dog. Usually after this, Blue gets super excited that a shower is over. That's because during the shower, her stress levels are slowly increasing. Even though she doesn't seem as stressed out, it's still a build-up of stress. So the moment we, I let her out of the bathroom, she starts having zoomies, she starts running around and stuff like that. And that's when I do some more training because their energy is at an all-time high. I'm able to get her to calm down and we can do some more training outside. We might even go for like just a quick walk around the building before we settle it for the day.